The Tunzi Auto Top Off Kit has held the number one spot in the market up to date. Will the Neptune Systems Auto Top Off Kit hold up to the challenge? Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. In this video, we'll be checking out what you get inside the Neptune Systems ATK box and doing a test run in standalone mode. Once my Apex is up and running, I'll follow up with those who are considering purchasing the unit to connect to their Apex units. Before I get started, I wanted to give a shout out to 12 Gallon Nano. Check out his super clean 12 gallon long system. He's also one of the selected few beta testers for Neptune Systems products to include maybe the core. The link to his YouTube channel and a thread on nanoreef.com will be located down in the description below. An auto top off unit or ATO like this one will eliminate the need to manually add fresh water lost to evaporation on a daily basis. It will provide your saltwater aquarium with salinity stability, an important component of having a successful aquarium. In standalone mode, what sets this ATO apart from others is that it has three levels of redundancy or safety nets to prevent running your pump dry or overfilling your aquarium with fresh water. Depending on how much unnecessary fresh water enters your system and the size of your aquarium will determine how detrimental the effects will be. In any case, it's never good as I demonstrated in my post vacation video. A link to that will be down below in the description. The Neptune Systems ATO has two optical sensors, one primary sensor and one emergency stop sensor above the first one. A second emergency redundancy is provided by the float valve which can be removed and make the unit more compact to fit into tighter spaces. The third failsafe is provided by the system's onboard IQ technology which intelligently keeps track of how much fresh water your specific system will typically need to top off water loss from evaporation. Let's open the box, see what we get, set up the ATO and test the failsafe features. First up are the instructions and it has pictures on both front and back. Perfect. Some 12 feet of orange quarter inch flexible tubing, the orange is a nice touch. An Aquabus cable to use only if you're connecting this to an Apex unit. Since we're doing standalone mode, we'll put this aside. 5 foot power supply cable to power your PM up through the FMM module. The magnetic holder containing water level sensors and a float valve in gray and orange, also a nice touch. The optical sensors are labeled 1 and 2, each with about 9 feet of cord. Also the magnet's pretty strong or I'm just weak, but it's rated for half inch glass or acrylic. The FMM module to connect your power and sensors has their new mounting bracket on the back, a very nice touch. The PMUP pump and over 6 foot connection cable to the 24 volt ACC port on the FMM module. The pump is rated for 14 feet of vertical pressure. Push connect fittings for the tubing and some zip ties and screw mounts. And the typical orange getting started guide. And no sticker. All right, let's set the unit up to get an idea how it behaves. First step is to temporarily screw the FMM module into this piece of shelving. I just pre-drilled a couple pilot holes and used the included screws. Place the bracket down and screw it into place and careful not to over tighten it. Next, take the largest end of the push connect fitting and firmly push down on top of the PMUP's chimney. I actually made that word up. Ensure the push connect is all the way in. Now take one end of the orange tubing and install it on the other end of the push connect. Again, make sure the tubing is all the way in. The second push connect has a very important function for those who have sumps that are lower than the reservoirs. A common issue is back siphon into the system, adding fresh water to your sump even when the pump is turned off. This push connect has a small hole which is angled downward. The push connect fitting needs to be mounted just above the water line and the pinhole facing downward toward the pump. When the PMUP is on, there'll be a strong stream of water shooting out of the hole, so make sure the push fitting is contained inside your ATO reservoir. The purpose of the pinhole is to break the siphon after the pump has turned off. Take your flexible tubing and measure the top of the water line in your ATO reservoir and cut your tubing accordingly. After cutting the tubing, install the siphon break push connect. Again, ensure the pinhole is facing down. Next, remove the compression fitting on the magnet holder. Insert the freed up end of the tubing in the hole in the center of the nut you just removed. Attach the compression nut and tighten down. This white screw on top of the magnet holder comes pre-installed. If you're keeping your float valve installed, you won't need this, but like I mentioned earlier, you do have the option of removing the float valve to make the unit more compact. Drop the pump into your ATO reservoir. 
Attach the magnet holder inside that portion of your sump where the water level drops as a result of evaporation. It's typically in the return section of your sump or inside your aquarium if you don't have a sump. Time to connect the sensors into the FMM module. The sensor labeled 1 goes into port 1 and the sensor labeled 2 goes into port 2. It's very important you make sure the plugs are all the way in. If you feel a click then apply a little bit more pressure to make sure the plugs are properly installed. If they're not properly installed, the PMUP will run continuously and ignore the water sensors because they're not plugged in. Grab the plug connected to your pump and install it into the port labeled ACC. Don't try to force this one in, it'll click and be properly installed thereafter. Lastly, install the end of the provided power supply into the port labeled power. Now that we have it set up, let's take it for a quick test drive. When you power up the unit, the LED on the FMM will flash and go to a solid blue light indicating it's in standby mode. A green light indicates the ATO is sending top off water to your aquarium. When the water line reaches the bottom of the primary sensor, the sensor closest to the water line, the ATO will shut off. A flashing red light with an audible alarm obviously means there's an issue. There are four different types of audible alarms. Each alarm identifies the issue with a sequence of audible beeps. I'll go ahead and simulate some of those issues so we can see how the unit behaves. In standalone mode, should the pump run continuously for five minutes, usually because the ATO reservoir went dry, your pump will automatically shut off to prevent damaging the pump. I simulated this by removing the pump from the reservoir while it was running for five minutes. Obviously running the pump dry can damage it, but it was the only way I could really test the system. You will get a flashing red light with an audible alarm with a sequence of one beep followed by a pause. The single beep tells you the issue is with your PMUP. Aside from running dry, the IQ fill will learn the average top off time for your system with five or more continuous auto fills without having been disturbed or being reset. Once you remove the power from the FMM, it will have to complete five auto fills in a row and start averaging the time it takes to fill your specific system. Should the time exceed double the average time to fill your sump, the IQ will kick in, shut off your PMUP, causing the red light to flash and sounding a single beep audible alarm. Should you encounter a flashing red light with a sequence of two alarm beeps followed by a pause, then the unit is telling you the issues with the emergency optical sensors having been submerged for 10 minutes or longer. If this happens, make sure that the sensor in port number one is properly plugged into the FMM and that your siphon brake is not underwater. You will notice that ports number three and four are freed up for additional equipment options. In standalone mode, these options are limited as the FMM comes pre-configured and cannot be changed unless it's connected to the Apex. Since we are solely discussing standalone mode, here are your options. You have the option to plug in additional equipment which must be purchased separately. You can use port number three for a leak detector as I will demonstrate in a bit, or an optical sensor which is exposed to the air in a normal operation. If you choose to plug in an optical sensor here, it would be to read when the water level of where you place the sensor has risen beyond the normal water level. This optical sensor would best be served if placed above the water line in your sump. An alarm with a sequence of three beeps followed by a short pause indicates an issue with the water being detected by a leak detector, or if you plugged in an optical sensor, then it's an indication that the sensor is submerged. In either case, the pump will be triggered to shut off. Port number four comes pre-configured to plug in an optical sensor where its normal operation is submerged underwater. This sensor is intended to be used in your auto top off reservoir installed just above your pump. Should this sensor be exposed to air, it will prevent the pump from running dry for the maximum of five minutes we discussed earlier. I wasn't able to test this alarm mode, but as you may have guessed, it would be a sequence of four beeps followed by a short pause. So, will this unit be better than the Tunzi Auto Top Off? Only time will tell. So that will do it for this video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Also hit that subscription button if you haven't already done so and the bell right next to it to be notified when future videos are released to follow along with the next build. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button and we'll see you guys next Sunday. It was empty. It was empty. <laughs>